Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. Using Kirameki Paradise, let's talk about the history of the woman's dress. The last video I made, kind of the number one comment uh, that I got, uh, was like surprise at the um, at me saying that uh, women dress in thirds. Just to recap, like uh, kind of the three uh, zones uh, that women have, the women's uh, bodies, the way that they are built, is from the neck to waist, and then waist to knee, and then from knee down. That's a very kind of baseline piece of knowledge for uh, dressing for women, but a lot of people were surprised about that, so I was like, oh, I guess we gotta start from the basics. <laughs> so here, let's do a real kind of like quick and dirty uh, sort of crash course on the history of the woman's dress. We'll be skipping a lot, but I don't want this to be a video that's too involved, but just to give people sort of like a, a base, you know, on which to kind of take uh, my observations of like the, uh, the fashion in this game. Maybe it'll be helpful. But basically, there are two types of dresses. Uh, there is the ancient Greek style and then the ancient Egyptian style. And then to talk about the uh, two of those, uh, the ancient Greeks, they wore uh, basically just long pieces of fabric sort of uh, wrapped around them or tied around them, uh, like the toga or the sash, that kind of a thing. And so it's very drapey and uh, flowing, while the ancient Egyptians, they were more about uh, tailoring and structure. And so like, you know, uh, cutting and then sewing the fabric so that it fits the body and then has some structure. And then to trace those two types of dresses across history, um, actually that, uh, that ancient Egypt uh, sort of constructed dress, that was sort of a blip in history. And then after that, uh, much of uh, Europe and stuff, they went with uh, the more flowing uh, type of garment until the Middle Ages. Uh, that's when they started to wear like corsets and stuff and have more uh, like bodices and that kind of a thing. And then that was the dominating uh, style. And we're going to skip a bunch of stuff. We're going to skip the Renaissance. We're going to skip the uh, Victorian era. We're going to skip all the way to Coco Chanel. And then she was the one that kind of finally, you know, liberated uh, the dresses from a more kind of a structured thing. She was more about um, kind of not accentuating the waist at all having a drop waist, and then also using kind of like stretchy fabrics, like jersey. And then that sort of broke uh, sort of that dichotomy of the ancient Greek versus the ancient Egyptian, the flowy versus the structured. But I'm not gonna talk about Coco Chanel and then her stuff in this video. We're gonna stick to the, uh, the two that I pointed out earlier. Maybe in a future video I'll talk about uh, Coco Chanel, but there's not a ton of clothes in this game yet, uh, which really reference her which is a shame. Maybe in a future video, I wanna talk about like uh, fashions that I would like to see added to this game. But getting back to, uh, I guess the, uh, the 20th century is where we are now. Um, after Coco Chanel, there was Christian Dior, and then he sort of reintroduced uh, the, uh, the structure, the Egyptian sort of uh, construction, but without the corsets. And so we get like the new look that dominated, you know, the, the 40s and the 50s. And then the 70s and 80s, we went back to structured 90s. I'm trying to think if there's anything in the 90s. 90s was also pretty structured, but more kind of pared back compared to like the 80s and the 70s. And then we are uh, where we are now. And then I think recently there was like a uh, maxi dress uh, revival. That's part of the, uh, the ancient uh, Greek style. Uh, but yeah, all through history, uh, Western history at least. Uh, we've gone back and forth between uh, the ancient Greek flowy style and then the ancient Egyptian uh, tailored, structured style. And then we have uh, both kind of represented in this uh, game here. So I thought I would uh, use this model here and then kind of point out some, um, some good examples of each of the uh, two styles. And then I picked a uh, just a heel here and then I gave her some makeup, which I thought might be uh, ancient Egyptian style. <laughs> And then we can give her an Egyptian haircut. I was lucky enough to pull this uh, from the hatcher. So let's go into uh, one pieces. I guess that's what you would call a dress now is just a one piece. A uh, bit of trivia here, additional trivia. Uh, separates were not really introduced to women's wear until 
I want to say the 30s or 40s. And so that was pretty revolutionary. That was also kind of uh, maybe influenced by a Coco Chanel with her uh, two-piece kind of uh, suits for a woman. But anyway, uh, let's see if we can find some structured uh, Egyptian style dresses. Uh, here's a good one. All right, so this would definitely not be possible without, uh, you know, cutting and sewing and some structure. And then this, um, this uh, skirt is very full. This is probably supported in the old days, like uh, the medieval times or the Renaissance, they would have like hoops and stuff in there to uh, create volume with the uh, skirt. So there must be something in there, but since this is a video game, we don't really need to worry about it. <laughs> and then structure top as well. I uh, can't see the back. But yeah, if you see a zipper in the back, that's a telltale sign that that is a uh, structured, tailored garment. <laughs> uh, what else we got? This here, this probably counts as Egyptian. Uh, if it were longer, then it would be more uh, kind of a traditional style. Let's see if there's a zipper back there. Uh, I don't really see one. <laughs> But yeah, even though it is a very simple dress, there is structure in there, uh, you know, to support the woman, to, uh, you know, stay on so it doesn't ride up. And then uh, the length of the skirt, the, uh, the mini dress, which is what you would see like on the inside there, that didn't appear really in women's fashion until like the 50s, the 60s, the uh, swinging London that time. But uh, generally, the length of the uh, skirt kind of denotes the uh, the age of the wearer or like the age that the wearer is trying to be and so like the mini skirt is maybe it looks better on the younger women maybe in their teens or 20s not to say that it is necessarily sexier it's just based on the fashion of the time what is considered sexy uh, let's see what else we got for structured this one here, very simple, but I think you could call this Egyptian. Uh, what else we got? This is very structured, very tailored. Yeah, this one too. Yeah, we can see like the uh, the seaming on the side. That's very helpful. <laughs> uh, and then this one here. So it looks very, you know, very plain. We don't see any like uh, darts or anything where uh, fabric is like kind of pulled in and then sewed over on itself. But uh, this is uh, built so that it fits the body of the wearer. Therefore, this is an Egyptian style. And we don't see the uh, zipper in the back, but we see like a, a, a tie so that you can get a, a closer fit to the wearer. And that might be it. Okay, let's talk about ancient Greek style. And let's choose an appropriate hairstyle. When I think ancient Greek, I think uh, braids. That's a option. Let's see if there's anything else. Mm, that, that's something. That's something. I want like a bun with like the braid kind of like going over the head like a crown. That would be another thing that I would uh, request. <laughs> Alright, we'll go for this. Okay, let's look at some examples of uh, Greek dresses or like Greek lineage. Here's a good example. So this is almost literally like a piece of fabric wrapped around the body. So we can see like there are no seams, you know? It's uh, kind of fastened around the middle with this belt. To tell the truth, like nowadays, there are very few dresses that are actually truly ancient Greek, like a toga. This dress here probably has a lot of uh, structure in it. If you put it on a hanger, it'd probably keep this shape. Uh, but it counts as Greek because, just because of the, uh, you know, the atmosphere, the, the look of it. This is a much simpler one, but this one is also, also counts as Greek. 
And then here too, we see kind of like the, uh, the tie around the middle. And that's a very kind of uh, simple, easy way to, uh, you know, get some shape in your uh, Greek flowy, drapey dress. Uh, this too, uh, this has no tie around the middle, so it's very kind of like a baby doll sort of a silhouette. So no structure, just flowy and drapey. Mm, what's another good example? Oh, this one here. This is similar to the previous one, the first one that we looked at, but without the uh, arm parts. Uh, but we can see that it's like there's all these like uh, wrinkles going towards this one point right here at the waist. This is great because it draws the eye uh, to the waist and it also makes the waist look uh, slimmer. So that's a kind of a slimming technique that you see in dresses. Also looks like it's wrapped around, but again, probably there's structure in there. Mm, what else we got? Ah, okay, I think this is the last one we'll look at today. Uh, but this too. No real seams that we can see. Kind of uh, tightened, fastened around the middle with this belt. And can't see the back, but looks like an open back. But yeah, very full, very drapey, very flowy. Okay, so that was a real quick and dirty crash course on the history of dresses. Uh, basically, if we remember that there's just two basic types that will uh, get us through most, maybe, fashion discussions. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care.